I'd like to begin today by updating you on our efforts to recover the debris of several objects that the United States Air Force shot down over the last few days, as well as that of the spy balloon belonging to the People's Republic of China. And I'd like to put into some context for you how we have worked and are still working to better understand the issue of high-altitude, low-speed craft. Now, let me start with the Chinese program. When President Biden came into office, he directed the U.S. intelligence community to do a broad assessment of Chinese intelligence capabilities and to assure and to ensure that we were working to detect and to protect against them. I think for reasons that you will all understand, we cannot publicly go into many details about how we discover uh, and counteract foreign intelligence collection efforts, because much of what we have done and are doing is, of course, sensitive. But we were able to determine that China has a high-altitude balloon program for intelligence collection that's connected to the People's Liberation Army. It was operating during the previous administration, but they did not detect it. We detected it. We tracked it. And we have been carefully studying it to learn as much as we can. We know that these PRC surveillance balloons have crossed over dozens of countries on multiple continents around the world including some of our closest allies and partners. We assessed that at this time, these balloons have provided limited additive capabilities to the PRC's other intelligence platforms used over the United States. But in the future, if the PRC continues to advance this technology, it certainly could become more valuable to them. The President also instructed the intelligence community to take a broad look at the phenomenon of unidentified aerial objects. Indeed, President Biden conducted the first ever daily intelligence briefing session devoted to this phenomenon back in June of 2021. He was briefed that this is not just an issue for the United States, but one for the rest of the world. And as I said, our friends and our partners are dealing with this as well. We worked on a bipartisan basis to stand up an office at the Pentagon to study this in partnership with the intelligence community academic institutions, and the private sector. These unidentified aerial phenomena have been reported for many years without explanation or deep examination by the government. President Biden has changed all that. We are finally trying to understand them better. Now, in light of the Chinese balloon program and this recent incursion into our airspace, the United States and Canada, through NORAD, have been more closely scrutinizing that airspace including enhancing our radar capabilities, which, as the commander of NORTHCOM and NORAD, General Van Herc, said just last night, may at least partially explain the increase in the objects that have been detected. Slow-moving objects at high altitude with a small radar cross-section are difficult to detect on radar. Even objects the size of a, the Chinese spy balloon, which had a payload the size of roughly three school buses, were not picked up by previous administrations or other countries. We also know that a range of entities, including countries, companies, research, and academic organizations, operate objects at these altitudes for purposes that are not nefarious at all, including scientific research. That said, because we have not yet been able to defin definitively assess what these most recent objects are, we acted out of an abundance of caution to protect the security, our security, our interest, and flight safety. In Saturday's case, we acted in consultation with the Canadian government, the President speaking personally with, the, with Prime Minister Trudeau. The spy balloon was, of course, different because we knew precisely where that was. As we have said, we do not assess that these most recent objects posed any direct threat to people on the ground, and we are laser-focused on confirming their nature and purpose, including through intensive efforts to collect debris in the remote locations where they have fallen. In each instance, we have followed the same basic course. We assessed whether they posed any kinetic threat to people on the ground. They did not. We assessed whether they were sending any communication signals. We detected none. We looked to see whether they were maneuvering or had any per propulsion capabilities. We saw no signs of that. And we made sure to determine whether or not they were manned. They were not. We did, however, assess that their altitudes were considerably lower than the Chinese high-altitude balloon and did pose a threat to civilian commercial air traffic. 
And while we have no specific reason to suspect that they were conducting surveillance of any kind, we couldn't rule that out. That is why the President, at the recommendation of, Sec of the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the North NORTHCOM NORAD Commander, gave the order to shoot them down. These missions were completed successfully and safely. Efforts are actively underway right now at all sites to find what is left of those objects so that we can better understand and communicate with the American people what they are. I think it's important to remind the objects in Alaska and Canada are in pretty remote terrain, ice and wilderness, all of that making it difficult to find them in winter weather. The object over Lake Huron now lies in what is probably very deep water. So outside of recovery operations, what are we doing? Well, first, we are continuing to monitor. There are no active tracks today, but the professionals at NORAD will continue to do their important work. Secondly, we are consulting with allies and partners on the challenge of identified aerial phenomenon and how we can all work together to deal with that challenge. The President has directed the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, and the Director of National Intelligence to engage with their relevant counterparts to share information and to try to gain their perspectives as well. Again, this is an issue that affects everybody around the world. Third, we will continue to brief members of Congress and relevant state leadership on what we are doing and what we learn. The President has made this a very top priority. We have, over the course of just the last few days, and certainly over the course of last week, reached out to inform and brief members of Congress and relevant state governors of the operations that we were conducting and of the recovery operations that are underway. <clears throat> We've also kept Congress briefed generally on this issue of Chinese surveillance balloons, including classified briefings last August. And last week, administration officials provided classified briefings for all senators and all members of the House of Representatives on the PRC surveillance balloon. We fully expect and anticipate and support the ability to continue these briefings in the days ahead. And fourth, the President, through his National Security Advisor, has today directed an interagency team to study the broader policy implications for detection, analysis, and disposition of unidentified aerial objects that pose either safety or security risks. Every element of the government will redouble their efforts to understand and mitigate these events. And I'm happy to take some questions. Um, John, if the objects don't pose a military threat and they don't pose a threat to anybody on the ground, why shoot them down? Particularly because the military has uh, is routinely monitoring radar, you know, radar blips. And such. I kind of covered that in the opening statement. Um, two real reasons here. First, there was a very real potential risk to civilian air traffic. The ones shot down on Saturday. I'm sorry. Uh, yesterday uh, was about 20,000 feet, and the two shot down Friday and Saturday were at about 40,000 feet. And as you know, transcontinental air traffic is roughly around 30,000 feet. It depends, of course, on, on weather. And so uh, because we assessed that they weren't manned and weren't being controlled, uh, therefore left to atmospheric conditions, um, the, the real risk to safety of flight was, was a problem. The second purpose, and I talked about this earlier too, was even though we had no indications that any of these three objects were surveilling, we couldn't rule that out. And so there, you know, y you want to err on the side of safety here in terms of protecting our national security interests and the fact that these objects uh, could have and, uh, and likely did at some point in their path uh, transit over, you know, potential military sites of ours or sensitive sites. Uh, so again, out of an abundance of caution for those two reasons, the President, with the recommendation of his military leaders, directed them to be taken down. Because it's so unprecedented, um, should the public be hearing from the President directly on this? I have, we have been, uh, I think, as transparent as we can be. I, I won't speak for the President's uh, uh, personal uh, speaking schedule, but I mean, he has been deeply engaged in uh, every one of these decisions. He's been kept informed, including as of this morning, on uh, what's going on with recovery efforts. Um, and uh, and uh, he's very much staying on top of the issue and, uh, and directing his team to make sure we are properly consulting and briefing not just members of Congress, but state leaders as well. And of course, 
you know, we're also doing what we can in the, in the public sphere. Can you get to your Wait a second, sir. Excuse me. Uh, thank you, John. What is the president's standard going to be going forward about when he orders an unidentified object shot down? It's, it comes down to one simple formulation, and that's if at the recommendation of his military leaders he believes that the safety and security of the United States, the safety and security of the American people, his prime responsibility, warrant that kind of a decision. So it's possible we could see these shoot-downs on a regular basis like we saw over the weekend? I don't think it's useful for me to get ahead of where we are right now. The president will always side on preserving and protecting the safety and security of the American people. You said we're not flying any surveillance balloons over China. Are we flying any other kind of surveillance craft routinely over China? We are not flying surveillance balloons over China. I'm not aware of any other craft that we're flying over uh, into, into Chinese airspace. And then finally, can you tell us anything more about this octagonal object? How big was it? We're still trying to assess uh, what what that was. I, I'm not going to get into a description. I've, I've seen the press reports about what, what it looked like. Um, I, I think we all need to be humble here in, in terms of what our ability is to positively identify stuff from fighter aircraft that are going several hundred miles an hour past essentially, in terms of relative motion, a stationary object um, that was not very big. Um, so we don't know what this exactly looked like. And again, we're still not sure exactly what, what, it, what the purpose of it was or who owned it. But we, we hope to be able to find out more once we can recover the debris from that one and from the other two as well. Um, just a few minutes ago, Prime Minister Trudeau said that there's some sort of pattern to the objects over the last few days. Is that something you could elaborate on, what sort of pattern the White House has seen? I'm not familiar with the Prime Minister's comments, so I, I don't know if I, uh, if I should uh, take a, a swing at that. I, I would just tell you that, going back to what I said before, uh, these objects were not being maneuvered. They did not appear to have any self-propulsion. So the likely hypothesis is that they were being moved by the prevailing winds. Um, and maybe perhaps that's what the, the Prime Minister is talking about. I don't want to speak for him. But uh, certainly, um, as the prevailing winds, particularly at that altitude, go west to east acro across the North American uh, airspace, I mean, there was a general common movement in, in that regard. And you, you spoke at the top about kind of reassessing radar, given what happened with, with the initial balloon. Can you give us a sense? Can we expect, uh, should we assume that this is the, the regular number of these objects over the United States, that they've always been there and they just haven't been um, looked at the same way? Or is there any reason to expect that this is this I, is I, more I, than usual that, that are flying in the So two space? thoughts there. I mean, I, I, think, um, I, I think we can all get our heads around the fact that, um, that uh, there are sometimes uh, things floating at high altitudes for various purposes. As I said, scientific research, weather, weather balloons, uh, all manner of, uh, of, uh, of innocuous craft uh, uh, can, can be aloft at high altitudes. I don't think that that's necessarily un unusual here. Um, it's difficult for, for me to say exactly what you can expect going forward. One of the reasons that we think we're seeing more is because we're looking for more. As you heard uh, General Van Herc mentioned last night, they have, uh, they have modified the filters and the gains, as we call it, uh, of, the, of the, the radar capabilities to look more discreetly at high altitude, small radar cross section, and low speed objects. And so if you do that, um, anybody that's operated a radar will know you can, set, you can set the parameters. And if you set the parameters in such a way that to look for a certain something, it's more likely that you're going to find a certain something. Okay. Uh, given all you've discussed here and the actions the administration is taking and what people have learned, Chinese spy balloon this year and previous years, these unidentified objects that we shoot down, uh, they might have a question. Uh, when it comes to these higher altitudes, are America's borders secure? The president uh, takes, uh, as I said earlier, he takes uh, our 
national security uh, extremely seriously. He has no higher responsibility than the safety and security of the American people. And I don't think you need to look any further, quite frankly, than the decisions he's made in just the last week to 10 days uh, to evidence that. But it feels like he's plugging holes, like these are vulnerabilities that we are discovering in real time. You're making an assumption there that I don't know that the, I don't know that the analysis will actually bear out. Much. Um, the president gave the order to shoot down the object over Lake Huron yesterday. Where was he? What kind of information did he have when he gave that order? What was briefed to him? And, and what, how did he anticipate the outcome of that? He was here in the White House. He was uh, kept constantly informed by, uh, by his national security team and certainly by the military. Um, uh, he made that decision. I, I don't, couldn't give you the exact time on the clock, but it was, uh, uh, I believe, uh, mid to late morning, um, and, uh, and then it was executed in the, in the afternoon. Were, were, were there contingencies in place in case there was a reaction from a foreign government in reaction to shooting that object down? Was the, the one, on, the one yesterday? The one yesterday, yeah. Well, it was shot over, I mean, it was shot over Lake Huron and landed in what we believe to be the Canadian side of the lake. Um, so we were obviously in constant communication and consultation with our Canadian counterparts, and they are rightly, because of where we think it splashed down, I mean, they're sort of the, in concert with the U.S. Coast Guard, but they are also involved in, in trying to locate the, the debris right now. But there was good communication with our Canadian that allies. Signs of a foreign government taking a special interest in that object from yesterday no. or reacting in an unusual way? No. Good. I see you in the back. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, John. Two questions. One, you mentioned early on that um, this, the, the China uh, balloon might have been giving limited additive capabilities. I assume you're um, meaning onto their satellite surveillance. Can you specify what, I mean, what exactly it's getting from a balloon that they're not getting from orb orbiting satellites that go over us like dozens of With the day? caveat that we haven't fully recovered everything, though we have recovered some things from the bottom of the, uh, uh, of, uh, the Atlantic, um, and we're analyzing that. But with that caveat that we don't know exactly uh, what this uh, balloon uh, was surveilling or what its capabilities were. So just in general, and I, that is an important caveat that I'd like you to remember. Um, when you are at a lower altitude than space, um, you could perhaps get a better fidelity uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of imagery, for instance, uh, uh, of things on the ground. Uh, when you are not moving at the speed of a satellite, and therefore, you know, only getting seconds over a, a, a site, when you can maneuver left, right, slow down, speed up, like this thing could, then you can loiter. If you can loiter, you can soak in a little bit more. You can spend more time over a, a sensitive site. But, uh, some of their satellites are in geostationary orbit. I mean, they're just sitting there <laughs> gathering signals intelligence, right? So. Um, what is the benefit? I mean, is it just to see what kind of fidelity? We're going to learn more. I'd rather not go into any more detail than that right now. We're going to learn more. Um, and frankly, I think that's a terrific question you should be asking Beijing. And, and one last one. Uh, the, um, you said that uh, the, four, the other objects shot down were not able to transmit or were not transmitting signals, that they did not have any propulsion. Did the China balloon, did that have any, um, was it emitting signals back? I'm not going to go into more detail about uh, uh, the capabilities of that. We are going to be studying it and analyzing it. There is no question in our minds that that system was designed to surveil, that that was an intelligence asset. I'll leave it there. Has there been any outreach from anywhere in the administration to the kinds of companies that produce weather balloons or other craft that would fit these descriptions that might be from the commercial or corporate world to say, is this yours, or any kind of outreach, or have you been hearing from anyone who might say, we have ours, they're in this area. Is any of that going on now? I don't know of any conversations right now, uh, uh, Kelly, but one of the reasons why the President directed Mr. Sullivan to put together an interagency effort is to take a long look at that and try to learn a little bit better about who is up at that altitude doing what uh, for completely legitimate purposes. I think we, we all recognize we need to probably have a better site picture on that, and that's why the President wants this interagency effort to take a look. And what kind of intelligence might be happening in terms of the diplomacy that's going on or whatever if these are state-owned 
uh, objects. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Uh, is there is there a network of conversations that might be happening where someone might be able to say, based on this octag octagonal description, that hey, that sounds like the so and so. I mean. Is there some conversations that are happening that might be able to give us some descriptions? I mean, the short answer to your question is yes, and I talked about that in my opening statement. The president also directed Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin, uh, Director Haynes uh, to have these kinds of conversations with our allies and partners around the world to share with them what we're learning, but also to see get, the, get their perspectives. The we're quick to say it's ours, but it was for commercial purposes. Yeah, I, again, we're going to have those kinds of conversations with our, with our allies and partners to see what kind of experiences that they have had, what, uh, what we can learn from, from them, what perhaps they can learn from us. And are we still with object, or can we call them balloons? Still with object. And just to follow up on Kelly's question. And I won't mess that up today. On the, on the corporate <laughs> angle, is there any expectation that this is going to affect the, the executive order on surveilling the U.S. companies and what they're doing in China and the... Their I know of no such change to that exactly. Uh, okay, and then um, is there and just you said a moment ago that there's uh, no knowledge of a, a U.S. balloon or other craft over Chinese territory. Just being cognizant of the fact that China has a different definition of what their territory is than the United States. Is there any U.S. surveillance aircraft over Taiwan, <laughs> over uh, the South China Sea that that would would fit into that? There is no U.S. surveillance. Uh, aircraft uh, over Chinese, uh, in Chinese airspace. Okay, even Chinese claimed airspace. There is no U.S. surveillance aircraft in Chinese airspace. Okay, and then, and then just finally, is there any um, new formal approach that's being developed as far as how you're going to deal with these things on a systematic basis going forward? Is there a Well, again, <laughs> again, that's what, that's exactly what the the president wants Mr. Sullivan to run as a process, an interagency process, to help us, as I said in my opening statement, get around the policy implications here, and whether and whether or not there needs to be any uh, policy changes going forward. Um, there's no precedent for U.S. fighters taking down objects over U.S. territory, as far as I'm aware of. I guess my question is, you talked about the, the tweak in the radar systems. Has yeah. there been a tweak in the threshold for uh, the Pentagon? Uh, presenting to the president, the president signing off on military action related to anything over our airspace. I'm not sure I'm following what you In mean. In the wake of the Chinese spy balloon, yeah. the radars were tweaked, which is why you think you're seeing some of these things. Right. Has the decision about, or has the threshold for the use of fighters to take down objects also been tweaked? Has it been lowered? Has it been changed? We've never seen this before. All of a sudden, we've seen three, No, I, three actually, I, I'm sorry I didn't understand it at first. No, I mean, and you heard General Van Herc talk about this last night. Um, he's using established protocols um, to engage um, uh, craft in, in the air, aircraft in the air, um, that can be legitimately brought down. And as he said last night, the best way to do that, certainly in a timely and efficient, effective way, was through fighter aircraft and through the sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. Um, and they looked at, and he talked about this, they looked at other options to try to bring them down uh, to include gunfire, but that would have presented um, a greater risk to the pilots themselves. So this was the safest, most effective way to do that. Now, where we go from here, I, I think we just don't know right now in terms of whether there needs to be threshold changes, as you put out. I, I think it's important to just take a step back here and, and, and remember what the president did was order these actions with the safety and security of the American people foremost in his mind. Um, and there were there were very good reasons to do it. Um, the military then, once given an order, determines how they're going to execute that order. Uh, General Van Herc decided that the best way to do this was with Sidewinder missiles and, and fighter aircraft. And just to quickly put a sharper point on it, this isn't reactive to the Chinese spy balloon in the sense of there was political pressure, and so we are going to act quickly to take down any objects over our airspace because of the pressure that came from, say, Republicans. This was, this was, these were decisions based uh, uh, purely and simply uh, on what was in the best interest of the American people.